the Lord be with you. Welcome to this church of St. John the Evangelist in Highbridge. For those of you who are unable to get to church this Christmas, or simply would like to share some of our worship, we're recording this uh, reflection, which is my reflection for a midnight mass. And we hope that it will help you to keep the season of Christmas in a joyful and prayerful way. So we begin with the collect prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the stillness of this night, you sent your almighty word to pierce the world's darkness with the light of salvation. Give to the earth the peace that we long for and fill our hearts with the joy of heaven through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet The world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us, And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. How can words express the wonder of the incarnation? How can mere phrases evoke the beauty of the embodiment of God? How can a column of air vibrating over vocal cords give adequate voice to the mystery of all mysteries, the Word made flesh? In many ways, I suppose, the most appropriate response to the birth of Christ is silence. A 1960s hippie poster once put it like this, let the baby Jesus shut your mouth and open your mind. Good advice, I am sure. But we must come to terms with the fact that the Christmas story is full of words and sounds, vocalizations that call to us, demanding an audience. It begins with sound. The popular carol, Away in a Manger, tells us that little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. Now I know what the carol is trying to do, but I'm sure that the Christ child didn't stay quiet for long. Sooner or later, on that otherwise silent night, God split the air with his newborn cry. Words and speaking would characterize Jesus' life and ministry thereafter. At the age of 12, his spirited debates in the temple wowed the teachers. In adulthood, Jesus went on to utter some of the most sublime teaching ever captured in the pages of Holy Writ. He would give our world some of its most enduring phrases, its most enigmatic wisdom, and its most memorable stories, from the parable of the sower to the good Samaritan to the prodigal son. He spoke words 
that healed some, even as they stung others. Let him who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And on that last holy night of his life, he gave to his followers words that have been repeated at altars like this one for millennia ever since. This is my body. This is my blood. In his words from the cross, Jesus gave voice to both the deepest pains and the fiercest hopes of humanity. As the nails tore his flesh, his cry of dereliction was, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And with his dying breath, he whispered words of faith. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Crucifixion could not silence him. Death could not shut him up. Roaring forth from the tomb, he appeared to a tearful woman from Magdala, saying simply, Mary. And with the speaking of that single word, a poor woman grasped eternal life. Jesus' final words, as recorded in Matthew's Gospel, are both a declaration and a summons. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. God with us from beginning to end. A life of words, a life of speaking, not for nothing is Jesus called the Word made flesh. This then is why I'm permitted to speak here and now. It's not just because I've got a microphone and you haven't. I speak because Jesus has first spoken. Human words can now contain God's truth because God has put on flesh and spoken. I, who am usually guilty of saying far too much, can now only ever say too little because of the magnitude of what God has done. And it's not only people like me who get to speak. The incarnation of Jesus has given voice to the whole of humanity. Not principally, I would dare to suggest, the swaggering, blustering breed of politician that seems to be in vogue today, but the poor and the suffering, the refugee, the servant and the sinner, all are given a voice by this crying infant in the manger of Bethlehem. His cry is their cry, a cry of pain and of hope. So the Word made flesh then. If the Word made flesh has given consent for us to speak for him, we must, I suppose, venture to choose some words. And we do have a choice. These last couple of years have given us a whole raft of new words, haven't they? Lockdown, social distancing, self-isolation, lateral flow, PCR, key worker. We all use these words now. What words will we use in the year that is to come? So often, alas, ours are the quick and angry words of social media verbal knees that jerk their way into the soft places of others. 
And what about those flippant, banterous words that wound even while they entertain? This year, will our words be the weary, well-worn words of cliché, or will we strive for something more? Well, St. John gives us two words at the very end of his transcendent prologue. We could do far worse than to adopt these as our watchwords for 2022. The two words are grace and truth grace and truth. Firstly, let our words be words of grace. Grace means unmerited favour. Gracious words, graceful words, are not mere platitudes, but they're words that actively bind and heal. I forgive you Those are gracious words. Let me try to understand. Those are too. What kind of society might we build if our words were full of grace? Secondly, let our words be words of truth. Where grace acknowledges sin while choosing forgiveness, truth is that objective reality behind all interactions, the, the gold standard to, at which, uh, by which we are judged. Truthful words, then, are those that cut through the incessant crap of our frivolous culture and shatter our illusory pride. Both poets and scientists speak truth, and in a post-truth world, We need their words more than ever before. What kind of society might we build if our words were full of truth? Here at this Church of St. John's, we listen for the word of the Lord, week in, week out. We listen and speak and struggle to live lives worthy of Jesus, who was, after all, the master of grace and truth. We fail often, I fail often, but we will not be silenced. We speak because Jesus has first spoken. So I have written nearly, very nearly, run out of words for my Christmas reflection. So let my last few words be words of encouragement. God is with us. God is for us. God will speak through us if we let him. So let us choose our words with the wisdom of the Lord Jesus. Let us craft our words with the grace of the Lord Jesus. And let us season our words with the truth of the Lord Jesus. For he is the word made flesh and he dwells among us. All praise and glory to him forever. And may you have a very, very Merry Christmas. Amen.